All right, so let me actually go to uh, Ruby on Rails course content so that uh, we can actually see uh, the contents that we are going to cover uh, in this course. So the number 12, Ruby on Rails. So we're going to cover these two topics, Ruby and Rails installation and Ruby Basics 1. And uh, for the next 14 or 15 weeks, we are going to cover up to deployment. And uh, then these are the topics that we are going to cover in the subsequent sessions. Um, so let's move on to Ruby on Rails installation. Uh, based on the poll, about 80% of you have not written Ruby code before, which means you have not uh, probably installed Ruby on Rails. Uh, so let's get to the, uh, the lab documentation, and uh, you are going to actually see, um, uh, let's see the step-by-step -step of uh, Ruby on Rails installation. So here we go. So first of all, if you are running Windows or a Mac, the easiest way to install Ruby and Rails uh, is actually installing Rails installer. So this is from Engine Yard. Uh, and uh, you basically go to this website. And uh, it does have a, a package that contains everything you need for Windows and also OS X. Uh, for those of you who are actually running Linux, I'm going to actually show you how to do that. I'm actually running virtual uh, box uh, with Ubuntu. And uh, so basically, uh, let me just go over here. Okay, so basically all you have to do is just running this code. sudo apt-get install ruby 1.9.1 is basically installing uh, ruby 1.9.1 and apt-get is the uh, uh, Linux uh, package uh, manager and uh, so it's actually ready to install so you can just type ruby minus version and uh, ruby help okay so this is the Linux version of it and uh, for those who have again Windows and OS X this is the easiest way to install it Okay. All right, so let's actually get back to. So that's what you do. And uh, yeah, so this is actually documentation on Linux. And you can just type Ruby on uh, Ruby version and Ruby help, and uh, you should see uh, these uh, responses. Uh, now, installation of documentation. So Ruby has what is called the uh, uh, Ruby Interactive RI command, which lets you see documentation of Ruby class. So if you want to see the documentation of symbol, for example, let me actually go this one. Uh, you can say RI array. So I'm actually seeing the array documentation, RI symbol class. So I'm actually seeing the symbol class documentation. Okay. So in order to do that, you have to actually install the uh, all doc data. So you want to install this and this. Okay. So either one is actually fine depending on your version, but you can install both. Okay. So once you've done that, then you should be able to see the the, uh, the documentation of Ruby classes. Okay. So this is what I just did. And in order to find out what documentation, so each, uh, let's say, uh, module uh, is to have its own documentation installed. So if you want to actually see which one has been installed, you can just type RI and list all doctors like this. Then you should be able to see uh, what has been installed in terms of documentation. So for now, I have installed the uh, some Rails active pack and active record and things like that, and also as back. Okay. Okay, moving forward. Uh, now, if you have installed the Rails installer on Windows and Mac, you should have Rails installed as well. So you should actually type Rails version and Rails help like this. And uh, then it shows the version of Rails and Rails minus help. And uh, give you a help screen. Okay, so just check whether those things are working as well. And uh, so, um, Exercise 2 in this case is actually building Hello Rails application. So you can just uh, install, you can just create the Rails application like this. 
uh, if it actually comes back with these responses and then that means the Rails installer has been uh, completely installed including Rails. Okay? So since we're going to actually cover Rails in detail later on, I'm going to just move forward. Okay. All right, so this is actually how you can actually build a very simple Hello World application and then you can go to uh, uh, local 3000 and then you should see the screen that means the Rails has been uh, installed correctly. And uh, in this course, I recommend you to use Sublime Text 2 as your uh, ID. I'm not actually uh, the editor of your choice. Uh, you can use, in fact, any um, editor of your choice or any IDE of your choice. But I found Sublime Text is extremely uh, powerful uh, tool. In fact, many Rails uh, Ruby developers are using Sublime Text 2. Actually, many, let's say, the uh, Java, uh, the uh, JavaScript developers and PHP developers and Python developers, they all actually use Sublime Text 2. So you can download Sublime Text 2 from this link. Uh, it's actually a commercial product. Uh, I think the, uh, the, it is about $50. Uh, it's, it's actually definitely uh, worth the money. Uh, but you can use for free, uh, you know, the, uh, without any limitation. It's going to actually pop up once in a while that you have to pay. Another way that you can actually use it for free is you can go to the development uh, version and again you can actually use this one for free. Okay. Um, so, um, and uh, then you are going to actually install what is called the package control package. Yeah, I'm going to actually infect the uh, one session as part of the JavaScript, uh, advanced JavaScript framework course later on on how to use uh, the uh, uh, sublime text effectively. Uh, uh, but here for Rails and Ruby developers, I'm going to just show you how to actually use uh, Sublime Text 2. So basically, you go to uh, console. This is the way that you can actually install package. But in order to use the package installer, you have to install the package installer. So you go to view, and then you're going to, uh, in this case, I already have a controller. Uh, so I'm going to just start from here. Uh, you have a controller here. Uh, screen uh, and then what you want to do is you want to just copy uh, here basically what you're doing is that you are actually uh, installing a package installer package okay so you just type it and then press enter and then from that point on uh, you should be able to actually install uh, any package for sublime text too and there are in fact many many uh, packages that you can install all right, so here, and uh, once you have installed the uh, package, then you can install later on. But, you know, for 3.3, uh, you're writing your first Ruby code, and you can just uh, say, uh, file, new file, and control N. And then you just type whatever you want, and then you can save it. Uh, this is a way that you can actually see the Ruby syntax. So, since it has not been saved yet, uh, if you save it, then it will give you highlighted uh, Ruby uh, the syntax. But if you say uh, set uh, syntax Ruby, like SSRU, it also gives you the uh, syntax highlighting. Okay? Uh, and you can save the file. And once you save the file, it also actually gives you syntax highlighting as well. All right, so that's pretty much uh, what I want to do. And one of the packages that you can install is a Ruby format package or Ruby beautifier. So you go, to, this is a way that you can actually install the package. You go to preferences and go to package control. So let me actually go to uh, preferences, package control, and uh, package install. And then it will give you a list of all the uh, uh, you know, packages that are available. So if I just type Ruby, then you can actually see that a bunch of uh, Ruby packages that you can install and use uh, with the sublime text. Alright, so that is pretty much what I have in mind in terms of installation. So let's actually go to the first uh, Ruby topics, which is um, uh, Ruby Basics 1. So let me see, I have, okay, I have not actually uh, I have PDF file. Okay, so Ruby language uh, basics one. Uh, by the way, uh, because we do not have enough time, I'm going to actually take the questions after uh, the session. Okay, so you can ask the questions uh, through questions box uh, in GoToMeeting, uh, GoToWebinar, or you can send the questions to uh, class alias as I suggested. Okay, 
So these are the topics that we are going to cover in this session. So we'll talk about what is Ruby and uh, Ruby naming convention and we'll talk about interactive Ruby shell and uh, you have seen RI, Ruby interactive. Uh, that's basically documentation. And we'll talk about the Ruby classes and objects and the Ruby types especially, a string, hash, and symbol. Those are the most important Ruby types. And uh, then Ruby class inheritance, and we'll see how you can create Ruby object. And then we'll talk about how to create and invoke basic Ruby method. Okay, so what is Ruby? So this is from rubylang.org website. Ruby is dynamic open source programming language with a focus on simplicity. So simplicity and productivity, these are two main objectives of uh, objectives of Ruby language. And it has a very elegant syntax that is natural to read and easy to write. Okay, so when you see the Ruby and Rails code, you don't actually see comments that much because uh, programs itself should actually give you a clear indication in terms of what it's trying to achieve. Ruby is interpreted language and is dynamically typed. Uh, and it's optimized for people, so it's very easy to write and it's very powerful and it's fun to write Ruby programs. In Ruby, everything is an object, uh, so there is no concept of primitive like in Java. Uh, Ruby was created uh, by Mats. Uh, his full name is uh, Yakihiro and uh, Matsumoto, and typically I think he's called Mats. And uh, the version, uh, current version, is Ruby 1.9.3 as of July 2012 and as of now. Ruby naming conventions. Uh, so for Ruby file, it ends with .rb syntax. Okay, so this is the typical Ruby file name. And in terms of class and module names, you want to use a mixed case. So if you want to create your Ruby class called my class, and you're going to actually have a capital my and capital class. Okay. By the way, these are all conventions. There is no, uh, you know, the uh, the rule that you have to follow this, but this is typical. Uh, the way of actually writing Ruby code. Uh, in terms of method, you want to use a lowercase with underscores. Like this. And local variables, same as uh, method. Uh, lowercase with underscores. And instance variable, uh, start with at and then again lowercase and underscore. Class variables uh, use at, at, double at, and again lowercase and underscores. And global variable starts with dollar sign and again lowercase and uh, uh, underscores. And constants, uh, just like Java, uppercase. Alright, so let's talk about interactive Ruby. So this is a shell. So this is the shell in which you can write Ruby code and you can actually see the result right away. So, for example, uh, you can actually type IRB, and okay, let's actually just try these things. So, IRB, and uh, here I can say 2.2, .2 and uh, 5 times 4, whatever, and uh, MG, okay, something like this, and you can exit out. Uh, you can also actually have a uh, simple uh, prompt. That's that simple prompt. Then you'll have a simple prompt like this. Okay, moving forward. Okay, so this is what I just showed you. So RI stands for uh, Ruby Interactive. Uh, this is for actually displaying documentation of Ruby class. Uh, RI is Ruby what the per doc is per per. Uh, you can see list of all the classes for which RI has documentation. Okay, so for example, if you say uh, RI minus L, then it gives you all the classes it has a documentation for. So I can say loop hash class. And I get the uh, uh, the uh, uh, documentation of hash class. All right, so I'm gonna actually use the uh, lab documentation as well. So if I have shown already, then I'm gonna actually move forward. So let me just go left here. Yeah. 
so I just showed this one and uh, you can write your Ruby code as a file so you can use any any editor of your choice in this case I am going to cr I created hello.rb file that contains these two statements and uh, then the way that you can run your code is Ruby and name of the file then it will display the result okay. uh, again I showed you Ruby uh, uh, interactive uh, so RI say symbol uh, by the way, if you're running Windows, you probably see some strange characters like this. Okay? So in order to correct it, what you want to do is, this is what I just explained. Okay? Uh, you are going to actually install uh, ncconn. So I have that in the, uh, the hands-on lab zip file. Okay? So all you have to do is, uh, you just find, uh, let me actually show you. Uh, if you actually go to NC con director of the hands on lab, then you'll actually see uh, the uh, uh, actually um, uh, you're gonna actually see your uh, uh, you select whether you're 64 or 32 bit, and uh, here you're gonna actually run NC con like this, okay? And then once you run that, then you, you should be able to see things correctly without any strange uh, symbols. Okay, so Ruby types. So let me just move forward with the presentation and uh, Ruby object. Just like Smalltalk, Ruby is a pure object oriented language, meaning everything is an object. Uh, in contrast, languages such as C and Java are hybrid languages in which they have types like a primitive types, which are not object, and then they also have object types. Okay, so, you know, what is an object? Uh, you know, object is basically uh, containing uh, the state and uh, some behavior uh, in the form of methods. So, these are basically a uh, definition of uh, an object in small talk terminology. It holds a state, including references to other objects. Now, it receives a message from both itself and other objects. So, what it means is, uh, it is the same thing as this is actually interpretation of this an object is uh, object contains method which are functions that have a special access to the object data so in fact when you send uh, a message that the name of the message in fact is actually a name of the method okay? so we'll see how these things work later on uh, when we cover a Ruby metadata uh, a meta programming model okay? So for now, you know, you can think of Ruby object contains the state and method. Okay? So you can actually kind of you know, disregard this and instead just focus on uh, object contains a data and object contains method. Okay? And of course, object method can, can run and call other methods and functions. So these are nothing much different from Java. Okay? okay, as I said before, everything is an object in Ruby so even this minus one value if you can actually invoke a method of it so you can the way that you can invoke a method is that dot name of the method so if you can hear minus one dot abs it will return absolute value of minus one so if I say I'm gonna just uh, start with the IRB again so minus one dot abs okay so it returns one which means is calling a method called the ABS. Okay? So, you know, minus one is what is called the fixed num type. Uh, so we're going to talk about the class later on, but let me just to show you. You can actually find out the class of minus one by calling class method of it. And uh, you can even actually find out whether um, the, uh, this particular class, fixed num class, uh, uh, has uh, ABS method like this. Class public define. Oh, I, I missed the uh, question mark. Okay, public defined method ABS. Okay, so I'm going to try this one. You know, the uh, using the uh, lab documentation. Maybe my syntax is wrong a little bit. Okay, so let me just move ahead. Uh, even the nil, uh, you can actually find out all the methods that are available on nil object. So, you know, I can find out, for example, nil uh, method. I guess these are all the methods of the nil, minus one, and I can also say minus, uh, minus one plus 
detection method, something like this. So this is where I can in fact find out whether that is in fact the uh, uh, ABS method and things like that. Okay. Uh, in fact, the class itself is an object. Uh, so in a sense, Java is the same thing. Java, when you have a class, you know, it does in fact create a class object uh, inside the JVM. Uh, so, so the way that you can create the uh, class, uh, ob uh, with the way you can create an object is using that new. So it's basically invoking a new class method of song class. So this is a song class, and then you are invoking new method. So everything is an object, and those objects, in fact, have a set of methods. Uh, later on, we are going to talk about the code blocks. Uh, the code blocks, in fact, objects, and this enables, in fact, functional programming in uh, Ruby. <coughs> So again, we'll talk about this one in detail and Ruby uh, blocks uh, presentation hands on that because uh, coding blocks is a very, very important concept in Ruby. So variables and object. So when you actually create the string object and assign it to a variable, uh, it is basically pointing to that memory location that contains the string content. Okay? So again, this is not that much different from Java. 